Hello and welcome to this Slack tutorial video hosted by Adam Pearce of Strawberry7. In this video we're going to have a look at the best practice for notifications in your Slack system within a school environment. So when you log into Slack you will see channels on the left hand side here for each class. Now the way that this is to be used is let's say that you want to uh, send a message to a particular class, a particular person in that class you can just pick on that class and then type your message and that will go to the person, the teacher in that class. Because of this, you only want to be notified about messages that you're receiving for your class that you're in. Otherwise, if uh, the teacher in Emerald class sends a message to the teacher in Willow class, and you're in Jade class, then you'll receive a notification about that, which obviously you don't want to have. So there's some good practice for turning off those notifications and restricting them down. The best way of doing that is to um, go to your class, click the cog icon just here, go to notification preferences, and under here you'll see set your default notification settings in account preferences. So click on that link, and you'll then be taken to a section to set general notification settings. Uh, now the best way to do this is to select the second option here which is direct messages, mentions and keywords. Now what that means is that if somebody sends a message and actually mentions you specifically by using the at symbol, okay, which we'll come on to a little bit um, later, then you will get notification about that and if somebody sends a direct message to you as an individual you'll get a notification about it and if they use one of your keywords which you can specify down here you will get a notification about it. Um, now we'll go into direct messages, mentions, um, keywords a little bit in this video but um, it will be best to check out the uh, com configuration and the generalization video on Slack um, which I will link down in the description for a bit more details on how to actually configure Slack in a bit more detail for these options. So once we've got that option selected we can um, scroll down here and see some more options. So keywords are things that you might want to be included in. Um, again I'll go into this in a different video. Um, and there's some options about using different settings for your mobile device. I would recommend not ticking that um, because then w if you do install Slack on your mobile device and you leave this unticked then everything you set up here will just automatically go to your mobile device which is probably what you're going to uh, want. So there are some do not disturb features on here. Uh, the defaults are probably fine but you can change this for example not to be disturbed from 7 p.m. to 6 a.m. so that you're only getting notifications during working hours again very useful if you're putting slack on a mobile device there's also information here about preview of a message now you may want to turn this off if you're using your uh, whiteboard regularly um, because obviously whilst you're teaching the whiteboard it's mirroring your display on your computer you might not want to have the preview of the messages coming up with each notification so you can turn that off uh, just by unticking it you can have a sound play when notification comes through which is very handy and again you can change that to uh, any of these different sounds here so just pick one that you um, prefer um, you can mute all sounds as well but it's probably quite good to have um, the sounds on just so you know that messages come in. Flash window when receiving a message and flashing only when you're not actually using your computer is also handy because if you're teaching on the other side of the room with a class it's quite handy to be able to glance at your board and see that you've received a notification by the fact that the window is flashing. Um, messages can be delivered through the Windows Action Centre, that's a feature of Windows 10 which is handy to leave on as well. And then there's just some information here about um, notifications on specific mobile um, devices and um, when you are regarded as being inactive. Again the defaults are probably um, sufficient for that and I probably wouldn't turn on send email notifications because otherwise your email inbox will fill up quite quickly with notifications coming in. So 
Now that we've done the general notifications here, um, we now want to turn notifications on for your channel because the problem is with these notifications that we've set here we have set to only have notifications when you get a direct message, a mention or a keyword. Well, when somebody me uh, messages your channel, they're not necessarily going to mention you. And because that isn't a direct message and it doesn't contain a keyword, you would get no notification about that with these options. So what we need to do is make sure that we turn on the notifications for your specific class. So let's pretend that we're in Ruby class. Um, so what we would do is we would find our class. We can either search, scroll through or just start typing in the class here to filter it. We go next. And then what we would want to do here is turn on the uh, notification for all new messages. So what that will do is anytime anybody sends a message to Ruby, you will get notified about it, which obviously if you're in Ruby class is exactly what you want. So you want to do this for your class, for your channel. Click done. And now we've got that set up for uh, specific channel notifications for Ruby. That concludes the notifications um, tutorial. If, as always, if there's anything that you haven't had covered here or any questions that you have, please feel free to email support at strawberry7.com. The link to that will again be in the description. Thank you for watching.